Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi guys and welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Today is Friday, June 22nd, 2018. Got a lot to get to today. Uh, first thing I want to do is welcome you to the Texas Fly Caster YouTube channel. This channel is supplemental to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find more detailed information about the things you hear and see here. There's a lot to get to as I said. One of the things I want to show you right away is some photos that came in from a friend who lives up here in North Texas and he hitched up his boat, he had a week vacation, went down to Port Mansfield, Texas, and as these photos roll, you can see that his abilities on the flats of Lake Ray Roberts, and he's a pioneer on Lake Ray Roberts for fly fishing for carp from, from a boat, uh, make him quite capable of catching all kinds of saltwater fish down in Port Mansfield area. And we'll get to that later as far as the uh, wave fish are biting across Texas and what all is going on across Texas but I thought I'd roll these photos in front of you get let you get a look at those and see that we really uh, we uh, freshwater guys really do know what we're doing some of us do anyway when we get to the salt the local scene here I was out on the water today had a terrible weather prediction by our local talking weather head uh, totally missed. I got caught out in the wind, caught in a gale basically uh, as a frontal boundary came through Lake Ray Roberts here on the lake and it was extremely stressful and extremely dangerous this morning. I got off the water, got back here and everything's calm. It's still very hot. And heat rules the day right now in Texas as we're into the, into the killer throes of summer. Uh, I was, I'm able to find carp. It's doable. However, the mode for carp right now, um, where I'm fly fishing on Lake Ray Roberts, uh, seems to be pushed way ahead to something like a September or October time, of, time frame. Um, I'm finding them in those places that you find them in September, September and October. So feel free to contact me if you'd like to go out on, on the skiff. I book trips on my website. You can contact me through that on the contact page of Texas Flycaster website. Uh, as I was out looking for fish, this brings me to a story from earlier in the week. I had my trusty dog Finn, wherever he is, Finn, come here, wherever he is now. He's a big dog with border collie, and uh, come here, boy, come here. And I've had him on the water, come here, come here, come here, come here. I've had him on the water a couple times on the boat, and come here, buddy, come here. And as you can see, he's a pretty big boy now. And he leads me right into another story. We were going on the lee side of Wolf Island. If you guys are local, you know where Wolf Island is. And I was just looking for fish over there on Wolf Island. And uh, as we were leaving, about 10 yards offshore, Finn, here's a squirrel. Finn has never swam yet on his own got his feet off the bottom he stands on the edge of the boat and plunges into the water swims ashore and disappears in onto this bug infested i mean i'm eating up um snake infested all kind of, it's called wolf island i mean that's enough to scare anybody right so anyway long story short or shorter finally we uh as I'm leaving to go get help to search for him about an hour, hour and a half later, um, he comes running out as I'm taking off of the boat, runs out to the shoreline, I grab him and we go. Well, I knew I had a serious case of chiggers and I even found a tick later on. We've got a really bad year for ticks, chiggers, snakes, I don't know what else you want, but that's what we got. And it's going on pretty bad here in North Texas. One of the things, and this story leads to a solution to some of this. 
One of the things you can do, what I did, I didn't have any baby wipes. You can use baby wipes to kill off chiggers right away and they won't get embedded. If you put that, put that on right after you get exposed, um, they won't get embedded as much or maybe not at all. I had um, this hand sanitizer and I put that all over me and that killed them off. So the, all that was left was some little attempts at, at chigger bites and then um, and this is only after a little bit of exposure and one tick that was found and destroyed. So there's your antidote. Try carrying baby wipes. After you or your children or anyone gets exposed, wipe yourself down with baby wipes and that will uh, disorient them. And of course, the next thing you wanna do is take a shower as quick as you can. Wow, what a great story. <laughs> so let's see what else we got going on. I had to take notes today because there's so much going on. On the Texas scene, right now we've had rain on the Texas Gulf Coast, all along the Gulf Coast with this tropical formation that was there. There's a big difference between rain that falls on the coast and rain that falls inland and comes to the coast. Um, it's not nearly as, as intense when it's actually falling on the coast. We needed rain on the coast. We needed fresh water. We needed a rise in the bays, so this should be pretty good. That said, um, I feel sorry for you guys in the lower Rio Grande Valley where I grew up. I know you guys uh, think you can handle anything, but obviously you can't. This is a good test run with 12 inches of rain in one day uh, for a hurricane and you failed miserably. So think about 55 inches of rain in three days and run that through your mind and through what you saw with just 12 inches and you'll get an idea that you are not prepared in the Rio Grande Valley for a serious hurricane like Hurricane Harvey. It's not going to be good. It's going to be a major disaster. Uh, so keep that in mind. I would say evacuate if you're in the valley uh, and a big hurricane comes and they haven't done any more than they've done now, it's, it's going to be a disaster and I would evacuate. So that's going forward someday you're gonna get a hurricane maybe not today maybe not tomorrow but someday you will and the reason I know is because that's where I grew up when we get back to inland waters and fresh water the big thing going on right now is is probably nothing it's pretty average. The heat's kicking up the water temperatures. We just jumped right into some hot weather and this summer. And there was a, just a huge just vacuum where there was a lot of time last year for it to warm up gradually. It just warmed up overnight here. Uh, it's, it's pretty much, you know, the fly fishing has gone, kind of degraded down for fresh water into good and slow. If you look at the report, when I roll that at the end, that's from TPWD, and all you see is slow, fair, and good, and it's barely, <laughs> barely any of that. So it's really tough in the freshwater scene. Let me just jigger back to saltwater one time. The places you want to be are south, regardless of the rain, south, because there's not a river. There's a Rio Grande River that drains straight into the Gulf. It does not go into the bays. It shouldn't be a factor. So where you want to go, Port Mansfield, all of it, from, from inland all the way across the, the waterway to the cut, back behind the cut and the swirls behind the, the jetties. If you can get, if, you, if it's a dead calm, if you can get out in front, you might even catch a tarpon. You never know if you can get out in front of the jetties. Mansfield, going further south, you want to go South Padre Island, and then the South Bay, South Bay, they're catching snook. It actually says good for snook in the South Bay. Imagine that snook. <clears throat> wow. It's like catching a unicorn. Uh, not quite as difficult as that fish that you saw earlier, a sheep's head on, on fly, which is pretty, pretty tough. It's hard to do. I've never done it. A lot of people have never done it. They've been fly fishing salt for a long time. Anyway, that's what's going on. Um, let me see what I've got here in my notes real quick. Oh, okay. Next week, finally, I've got footage of the TFO Axiom 2 rod. 
caught my first fish on it. Happened to get that on video. So what I'm going to do is run a video just about reviewing the Axiom 2. And what that is, is I'm going to, instead of just having it stand alone, being a standalone review, we're going to put the Axiom 2. I'm going to show you some things about it and where, where the spine is and where the backbone is on that. And I'm going to show you the BBK about the same. It's a seven weight and then the eight weight mangrove and then I'll do some comparisons for you because they, these three rods price range with Axiom 2 at the top end really at the, at the, at the top top end of low price rods now um, is superior to those two rods and I'll explain why next week in that video thanks for putting up with me in my rough voice it's been a it's been a trying day uh, on the water this morning very very tough and we will see you next week make sure you check out the other videos I have here including fly tying videos uh, informational videos I have some videos that uh, have gone bad actually on my website that were never uploaded to YouTube because they have proprietary music whatever whatever and so <clears throat> I'm going to try to fix those up and I'll start putting some links to those so that you can see some really old, old footage um, back when I was fat, uh, shot um, mostly in Colorado, Colorado stuff, which I haven't been there in a while. Uh, probably won't be back there for a while. I'm headed to the east, northeast uh, in July, not to fish, but for another reason. But uh, you never know, I might actually get to do a little fishing when I get to the destination. Thanks for watching. I want you to have a great weekend. Be very careful as we head towards 4th of July. It's going to be wild. I wouldn't be anywhere near the water on the weekend before or after 4th of July if I can help it. Um, I can't help it. I'll be there <laughs> next weekend, I think. Maybe the weekend after that. But uh, I'll be there soon. Uh, two weeks. Two weeks from now, I'll be on the water. Um, and call me. My number's right here on the bottom. Or send me a send me an email right here on the bottom if you've got questions or you got input that you want to give I love receiving photos from other people and running it on my Instagram so I do have Instagram it's Texas Flycaster my Twitter channel Texas Flycaster my Facebook page Texas Flycaster so thanks for watching have a great weekend be very careful out there don't believe your weatherman whatever you do if you're not in South Texas or from Houston on down, do not believe your weatherman. They do not know what they're doing and they do not know what they're talking about. Have a great weekend.